Hey, it's Rob here, and I want to do a video um, on something that something that we should probably respect the Maker, our our Father, our God, and Jesus more about. It's just we're going along with this common disrespectful thing of calling God something littler than He is. If you look at what the Holy Spirit had the apostles and prophets write in the Bible. I should say the Old and New Testament, Holy Scriptures. The Bible is a name they've given it since things have been altered, a few things here and there in the Scriptures. So, um, the Holy Scriptures, okay? God chose His His servants, the apostles and prophets, the foundation of the church, it's stated in um, Apostle Paul's letter to the Ephesians. Um, he gave them the words to use to write down who he is you know his name he has a name um, if you look at the burning bush when Moses saw the burning bush and he asked who are you and it says in the King James Bible I am that I am right and also the same word in the rest of the Old Testament mostly is translated Lord I am that I am Lord um, it's the same word in the Hebrew. Um, when I looked it up, though, I went to where God said his own name in the burning bush. I figured that would be a good place to study his actual name in the Hebrew writing. In the original text, they translated the King James from. So I studied it from there. I took a couple hours to, tra to um, translate it twice to see what the, um, the letters sound like when you pronounce it. And then I studied the meaning of it. And um, the, the meaning, when I studied it, it talks about, in the um, Strong's Concordance Dictionary, the Hebrew to English, it talks about make and exist, or elements of the definition of the word. And if you look up the word, in, in the, it says Jehovah in the King James, okay? It's in the in the text they translated the King James from, it's pronounced Hava, Yah Hava. Um, the the part Yah or Jah or Je Jehovah Jehovah, Yah Jah whatever. It's like the one, the one, that being or that that one. Okay, the word Hova and Hava, and they're different. If you look in the Strong's Concordance, the word Hava and Hova, they're two different words. They have two different meanings. I've been over this in other videos. I just want to pin it down, though, for just to, um, you know, if we learn the truth, it's, he says if you learn the truth, the truth will make you free, right? So why don't we do that you know and so let's use all the tools we have to investigate the deepest truth we can and what better thing to have than what the Holy Spirit had them write to us the direct words that were used I think there's an importance there so let's continue on this um, the word hova means chaos and ruin I think there's another element there too but that's an evil element. It's so, and what's interesting is the text in the scripture says Hava, H A V A. So, Hava means to make or to make exist. And if you put the one who makes or makes exist in one word, you can call him Maker. That's why I call him Maker in my videos and in my teachings and this and that because that's the best word I found to describe his name and we I don't call him Yahava or Jehovah or Yahweh because I don't speak Hebrew I speak English and when you talk to people that don't, don't know God it's better to use their language to describe him and if at least you can say he's the maker and I've told people this I've said well he makes everything happen he made everything happen and he makes everything happen as his, his eternalness, you know. And so, then you get to the other New Testament word for commonly the word Lord. 
in the New Testament, it's a different word than the Hebrew. They're different languages. It's kurios, or kurion, or whatever the last letter is in the text. And any given, uh, you can change the last letter according to the sentence. But kurios, and it means, it does not mean Lord. Um, if you look up the word Lord in a word study, you'll find that lords have kings over them. A lord is a subject of a king. And my Bible tells me that Jesus is the king of kings. Okay, so if he's the king of kings, then he's topped out. And the Lord of lords is, I have not been able to look that up. I've looked up the words in the Greek, and they don't match up with the, the definition of kurios. Kurios, I don't know, it's, it's fishy in there. So I don't know what Lord of lords, how they got that one. But I know Jesus is the King of Kings, that's for sure. Um, if you call him the controller of controllers, that makes sense too. The, because the word kurios means controller. It doesn't mean Lord. And if you look at the difference between that, a Lord is a subject of a king, just under the king, so he's a powerful position. Then the word controller means someone who controls. And if he's the controller of controllers, that means he controls everything, you know. Um, so I have a hard time calling him Lord, especially since the King James guy who authorized that translation called him Lord, and he's a king. That's kind of disrespectful, I think. It kind of shows something weird going on. Um, we don't have to dwell on that, though. I think we should just give him the respect that the Holy Spirit does and call him controller and maker you know I mean why not why not do that why not repent into a better way that way and another thing you know that Yeremiahu Weeps pointed this out and I love it on the last video he did with Carlos he said that there were like when Elijah was on the Mount Car uh, wherever he threw the prophets of Baal off Mount Carmel wasn't it yeah doesn't matter but he he said that um, who are you going to worship um, I think he said Yahweh or the Lord and Baal the word for Baal is Baal I think means Lord it's it's a, a meaning for it so and there's a lot of elements of this secretive Baal worship in the in the modern churches and I think the people in there that know what they're doing lead the people that don't into the little rituals of Easter and Christmas and all that, you know. But that's another issue. The point is, is why don't we call the maker, the controller, uh, who he is, you know. And I noticed when I first started praying to the maker and, and saying, hey, you know, praying to maker and calling him maker, father, Jesus I call him father, but he... Him and Jesus, the Father and Son, are the maker and controller. Um, what's interesting is that I found, this is a side note that's beautiful, that the maker, Father and Jesus, right, the Holy Spirit with them, the, the God, he chose the word controller in the New Testament to refer to Jesus. It also refers to the maker, but... I think the closest word they had in the Greek was controller. I don't think they have a, a word for maker in the Greek. So the closest thing they had was controller, so they used it. But if you look at Jesus and who he is in John 1, chap in John 1 chapter 1, it talks about in the beginning was the, the word, which is the logic. It's logos. The logic, by the way, is correct reasoning. It's not just reasoning as the... the um, See, the uh, what's called um, Strong's Concordance, faultily, it doesn't, it doesn't, um, it doesn't translate that word right, because logos is logic, it's a cognitive logic, in other words, the English word and the logic and the Greek word logos are the same cognate, the same word equal, equality, you know, and to, to say that logos means reasoning, it drops the ball on half the meaning, because Logic is not just reasoning, it's correct reasoning. Accurate, true, true is the key word, reasoning. As the Holy Spirit of truth, Jesus indicated, is, is his spirit. So 
that's how the logic of God, the correct reasoning of God, was made flesh and dwelt among us, right? And we want to have the word that is the logic, the correct reasoning in us. And that's how we can be righteous. So the spirit of truth, okay, and logic are, are one, you know. You get it, it, it supports each other, and that's, that's God, you know. So we can figure those things too, you know. I mean, we can be more accurate with our, with, with the truth. If, if we can keep these truths and, and uplift the truth toward others and show people that don't know this, we can go up to someone who doesn't know God or anything and you can say, hey, you know what? The correct reasoning of how to do things, it's, there's a correct way to do stuff, you know. And, and God made that correct reasoning into a man. His name was Jesus. So you can look at Jesus and see the correct way to do everything, the correct way to reason, and every reason for anything is Jesus. You know, you can know the maker, the maker is correct, he does everything right, so you can look at him and see that. And he's the maker, he's not a lord of a king, he's, he's the maker, you know. The closest thing you could say would be that Jesus is the lord of God, but that's not what it says, you know. He's the controller of God. And that's what, getting back to what I was trying to say earlier, the logic or the correct reasoning controls everything. Everything is controlled by the controller. That is God, that is Jesus specifically. The logic, everything's logical. And now even the illogical stuff that's happening, it's logical because... It will show the glory of God and the mercy of God and the redemption of Jesus to this creation. So, overall, all you know, all things were created by Him. That is Jesus. That is logic. All things were created by correct reasoning. God correctly reasoned everything out, and it was created by that. Okay, so... And it says, all things were created by Him and for Him and through Him for him. So God created everything for his logic, for his correct reasoning. Jesus. And uh, Jesus is a man too. I'm not saying he's not a man, but he is, he is the father's correct reasoning or logic made flesh. And he is one with the father sitting on the right hand of God. And the right hand, by the way, is the Holy Spirit. I, I mentioned that on a comment on, um, Sister Crystal's video, um, she is talking about, she read a psalm, is a beautiful, hard, heavy, um, powerful psalm, and it talked about his right hand. When you read the psalms with the right hand in it, you can see that the, you can, if you read it, read the Holy Spirit into that, you can see God working through his Holy Spirit in the earth and supporting us and holding us by his Holy Spirit, and just very beautiful. So... I'm just wanting to get these points across, and I hope we can acknowledge what the Holy Spirit chose to call Jesus and Father and Himself, you know, the one God. So if we can correct ourselves and in, in, to a more perfect um, outreach to other people, because, you know, they're tired of the, the man on the street and the woman on the street, they're here, you know, they see the signs on the back cars, Jesus is Lord, and this and that. They, they don't understand that. You know, uh, uh, someone who's not familiar with the, the Bible or, or the Holy Spirit, they'll see that and say, Jesus is Lord. And they think, oh, well, there's other lords of kings out there. So what's that? What's that mean? You know, what, what's, you know, there's no, nothing there. And if you put on there, Jesus is controller and, and Jesus is logic, you know, you can go in a dictionary and do a word study and figure out what logic means. It's correct reasoning. Um, not everyone knows that, though. They think it's just reasoning of whatever your reasoning is. But to be specific, it's the truth, true reasoning, accurate, true reasoning. So I'm kind of rambling on now, but I, I wish we could sink in this aspect and give them the, the due respect that the Holy Spirit gave them when the Holy Scriptures were written by the foundation of the church, by the Holy Spirit's leading. If we can do this, we can easily get through to people, you know, the logic and stuff and, and the correct way to do things. Jesus did everything the right way. 
And so the, his Holy, that's how you can identify the Holy Spirit. What he did was of the Holy Spirit, and that's the right way, the right thing to do everything. So just some food for thought and prayer. And may we conform ourselves to the likeness of Christ, as the Holy Spirit says, as the Holy Spirit leads. We, we don't want to go with any twistings and turnings of man, but the Holy Spirit. That's the unadulterated, that's what I want to get at, the unadulterated Word of God, logic of God, the Holy Spirit. And the logic of God comes from His Spirit. The Spirit, the Spirit is His animating, generate, life-generating force. And if He's generating this life, He's generating the correct reasoning. And, the, and you know, with correct reasoning, we have also the power from the Holy Spirit to act on that and to set forth correct action in the world. So, may that bless you and, and let's keep seeking God and stay humble. Because only he can, only he can, his works can do anything through us. Ours cannot do anything without him. So we need to just um, go with him, listen and act and step into that which he throw, He points out for us to do and leads us to do. So I'm going to stop this video now and, and his blessings will continue in Jesus Christ.